All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the Brother Ties of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, this one is an article. And uh, what you have here is uh, Trump tells African Americans to understand their history. Or you will go back to it again. All right. Now, who are the African Americans? These are the so called Negroes. All right. So called black people. All right. Here in America and around the world. And um, what these people are truly are is Israelites. All right. Just as well as the Northern Kingdom, as the Hispanics. All right. The Native and Seminole Indians. All right, they are all Israelites. You have uh, 12 tribes, all right, 12 sons of Jacob. So Trump tells African Americans to understand their history or you will go back to it again. All right, now when I first heard this, you know, I had to, wanted to see how he said it. You know, was he hinting, hinting on truth or was he, you know, being Edom, all right, being Edom, being that, uh, that dragon, all right, that demon. So it says, um, during the interview with Fox News, all right, this is uh, well, an interview with Fox News, but this is from MSN.com. Uh, during an interview with Fox News that was aired on Sunday, Donald Trump told members of the African American community to learn U.S. history in opposition to statues of problematic figures being removed. All right. It's, and it's always about learning the history of you Europeans. Well, let's say you Edomites. You know, we, we learned enough of these Edomites. Okay, going back to the Greeks. All right, Roman, Rome, the Roman Empire, you know, really mirror the image of Greek. Of, you know, starting with Alexander, the uh, so-called Greek. Okay, he basically established these Edomites in the world to uh, rule. Okay, so it was through the Greeks down to the Romans until when the Roman Empire fell. Then you had what you call the Byzantine Empire. All right, then, you know, you go into the, what they say, the Dark Ages. All right, where uh, Jake ruled Europe for a thousand years. Esau was pushed up into the caves. Now, this is the history that, you know, in the schools, in their government schools, they're not teaching you. They always want to teach you, like Trump's saying here about u.s history well we know enough about the u.s history you know jake need to wake up to their true history which which them being the israelites that the bible speaks of all right so it says uh speaking for speaking to fox and friends anchor brian kimid trump was asked for his thoughts on the anti-racism protests that have been attempting to remove status around the united states of Confederate generals and other individuals such as Christopher Columbus and Theodore Roosevelt, uh, which promote a history of slavery or white people being perceived as a superior race. On the subject, Trump claimed that the people tearing down the statues, it says, which he referred to as beautiful pieces of art, didn't know why they were attempting to remove the monuments, adding that he was aware of groups who wanted to remove statues of former presidents such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison. Despite all owning slaves, he also said that people were trying to remove monuments honoring Abraham Lincoln, who he who is the president who abolished slavery. It says, commit, then asked Trump, since you have done a lot to a lot for African American community. What is your message to them when their ancestors were enslaved because of these leaders who are commemorated on these monuments? Now it says, what should have been a relatively easy answer and an apology from Trump for the history of the injustice and equality forced upon black Americans turned into a complete mess of an answer. Turning, in, turning into Trump telling black people to learn U.S. history or risk going back to it. 
All right. So with that being said, you now know what Trump meant. OK, you know, if you're going to go back to it, taking away these statues and, you know, uh, breaking down this place in what you call America, Esau's kingdom. All right. That's going to what? Bring forth a war. All right. And he believes that, you know, black so-called African-Americans don't stand a chance when it comes to coming against Esau, when it comes against them. All right, because they the ones that own the military, the technology, the energy. All right, you know, they own everything. This is their kingdom. So, you know, basically, if you African-Americans don't stop, in a nutshell, they're going to put your ass in slavery, which is going to be the new slavery, in which they believe it is, which is concentration camps and everybody receiving RFID microchips. All right, because it's going to come. It's going to come, you know. This is what uh, the uh, agenda is for what you call the Illuminati, all right, which are starting with the Rothschilds, these international bankers, all right? They have a plan to dominate society on a God level, all right? So it says, um, my message is that we have a great country. We have the greatest country on earth. We have in heritage, we have in history, and we should learn from the history. Yeah, we did learn, all right? The men of the Lord did. We learned a lot from all this history, all right? Since the time when you started ruling, all right? Going back to Alexander the Great. Oh, they call him the Great, Alexander, all right? So it says, and if you don't understand your history, you will go back to it again, see? So you're going to go back to it being what? Being a slave. He's not talking about you going back into it where you were Israelites before they dragged you uh, here to the to the Americas, all right, really to Asherif, all right, you know, which we was in, a lot of us was in the west coast of Africa, all right, which would be in demons, you know, some of us kept our uh, culture, then others, you know, mixed and mangled with ham, picked up their deities and gods, demons, all right, and the most high had calamity come upon us because it was the judgment written, all right, Yahweh Shai, he prophesied of 70 A.D., Okay, 70 AD, the uh, Israelites flee Roman persecution. General Pompey, okay. So, um, let me get back here. It says you will go right back to it. You have to learn, think of it. You take away the whole era and you're going to go back to it, to it sometime. People won't know about it. They're going to forget about it. It's okay. Now, what I do like... I like the idea of building new statues to people, to great people, people that have done something, and I think it's okay. But you don't want to take away our heritage <laughs> and history, all right? And the beauty in many cases. It says the beauty, the artistic beauty, some of the sculptures and some of this work is some of the great, you can go to France you can go anywhere in the world and you will never see more magnificent work. And that's a factor. It's not the biggest factor, but it's a factor. As with most things that Trump says, it's not entirely obvious what he means, but he does seem to be encouraging black people to learn U.S. history and heritage. And that ain't no good thing. You know, encouraging black people to learn U.S. history for what? All right. That's the whole problem. <laughs> Jake don't know who the hell they are. All they know is that they've been duped, they've been ran through, they've been uh, uh, brought through the mud, all right? They've been uh, brought here as slaves, not volunteer slaves, but slaves, all right, you know? And they had to worship, okay, everything that Edom put before them, all right? Shit, even down to the needy, the needy greedy, man, you know, being a bed wench, man, the black woman ain't nothing... But a bed wench, and she practiced that practice every day. Little do she know. You know, the so-called blacks and Latinos have what you call stock Stockholm syndrome. You know, they can't get right. A lot of a lot of you uh blacks and Latinos, all right, or um, you have a mental illness, you know, you have low self-esteem, you know, you have um what you call, I can't think of the word, but Jake fucked up, man, mentally, spiritually. You know, and physically, because Esau ain't doing you no know, justice even when it comes to the foods. 
that you eat, you know, to the shit that you gobble down and eat up on your television, to your folly, the mirth of the, well, the, the bread and circus of your entertainment. It's all bullshit. It's nothing for you to grow. Jake is the biggest consumers, man. You know, and Jake really is what made this place America great. So it says, but we can be sure that it means uh, when he says you'll go back to it again, which seems very suspect indeed. Yeah. All right. The president uh, saying that, man. You know, so that's basically the article. I'll play this video and I got a few scriptures. You look at Thomas Jefferson, you look at George Washington, you look at James Monroe, you look at James Madison. One thing they had, they were brilliant. They also had slaves. So how do we grow as a country, but yet not forget our past? So you have to understand history and you have to understand the culture and so many other aspects of our country. And people can study that and they can hate it. And let's all hate it. But you can't take down George Washington's statue. And half of our country is named after Washington. You can't. Do, we have to remember the heritage, the, the the culture of our country. Since you have done a lot uh, for the African American community, what is your message to them who said my ancestors were enslaved because of their? My message is that we have a great country. We have the greatest country on earth. We have a heritage. We have a history, and we should learn from the history. And if you don't understand your history, you will go back to it again. You will go right back to it. You have to learn. Think of it. You take away that whole era, and you're going to go back to it sometime. People won't know about it. They're going to forget about it. All right. You know, I speak as a man when I say, in my opinion, with this, with his message, you know, is that, you know, if you, you know, come against, you know, their, their glory, their pride, you know, they're going to be forced all right, to put you jigs back in slavery because not over his dead body, all right, will you destroy the kingdom in which they built, all right? So that's what the message I got out of that with Trump. You know, it looked like he tried to say, he tried to be as calm and, you know, uh, comforted as much as he can, but, you know, it's in his DNA, it's in his spirit. Uh, I got a quick scripture here, and this is why you jakes need to wake the fuck up. Well, let me say the elect, you need to wake up. All right. Now, this is Deuteronomy 32 and 7. It says, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. You see that? Remember the days of old, which is the ancient times. All right. Knowing who our forefathers is, because our forefathers are damn sure are not Esau's forefathers. All right. Our forefathers go back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, even as far back as Adam. You know, that line, that seed that was chosen from Yahweh. All right. Going back to that Adamite, all right, that the Lord chose. Now it says, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thou father, and he will show thee, thou elders, and he will tell thee. All right, so being that the curses are on us from Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, you know, the Lord is dealing with his prophets, his elect. And you supposed to be, you know, asking the prophets, all right, who you are. This is why... The Lord's men are out teaching his word in season and out of season, you know. You know, they're being taught, excuse me, they're out on the highways and byways with this 12 tribe sign, you know, for you to ask that question, you know. And that's that leads me to my next precept, but let me finish it up. It says, verse 8, when the Most High divided to the nations, with an S, nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the Most High is about division. He's not about what Esau's plan is and to bring everyone together. You know, you remember Barack Obama, when he was president, he kept always speaking about we all won. We all won, being one. Well, you know, the so-called blacks and the so-called white people will never be as one because that goes back, all right, to the uh, time of Jacob and Esau. You know, you read on that, Genesis 25, all right, about the story of Jacob and Esau, how they were twin brothers, and they were even fighting in the womb of Rebekah. And the Lord said that two nations shall, um, shall come of them, roughly paraphrasing. So each child was going to come out and have their own nation, all right, one stronger than the other, all right, the elder shall serve the younger, all right. So there's a blessings there and characteristics of who these people are today. 
And it shows you that the black and so-called white will never get together. Because the Most High have did what? He divided the nations, their inheritance. All right. Esau came and raped, robbed, and stole, uh, you know, everyone's inheritance of their rightful uh, place on their land. It says when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds, all right, of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now, when I hear that word bounds, it makes me think of the, uh, the precept in Job, I believe, 14, where he said he set the bound that he can't pass. All right. Meaning you Edomites. And this time you're not going to go into this utopia and this fantasy of yours where everybody's microchip. All right. Where Esau is the most high and every creature on earth bow down to his image. OK, which is his system, you know, and he could be as the most high by, you know, playing within our bodies. All right. Because that chip, which is the mark of the beast, go a long way. It is a uh, that chip hijacks the, uh, the brain waves of, of your brain. OK, you know, you got certain prophets. Well, let me not. Yeah. False prophets, men and teachers out there teaching truth mixed with lies. And they're not speaking on and warning the, uh, the hopeful elect out there. OK. That the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, they're not warning them and they're not getting into the uh, seriousness, okay, of of that uh, microchip and what it does to the body. You know, some are ignorant. They don't know. Some is prideful and they do know, but they refuse to go into that. And um, everyone that do that, that's prideful, the most high is going to uh, show forth that you're a liar and you're going to be dealt with. So anyway, verse 9, it says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Seminole Indians, West Indians, Haitians, you are the Lord's portion of his people. Okay. It says Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Where Jacob, man. Jacob was one of our forefathers. All right. We came out of Jacob. So when you need to learn the history, you know, you know, yeah, you need to know Esau's history, but you need, importantly, you need to know your own history. You know, that's why Jake fucked up the way they is. All right, let me get to the next scripture. I didn't plan to make this too long. Um, Isaiah 55. Let's see, Isaiah 55 in uh, verse 6, it says, uh, Seek ye the Lord, Yahweh, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And right now, our Lord, Yahweh, Bashemi, Shai is near. All right. Prophecies are popping off like popcorn, man. All right. And, you know, uh, what's that? Proverbs, the first chapter, maybe starting at the 22nd verse and going on down. All right. Wisdom crieth out in the streets and the congregation in the, uh, in the marketplace. All right. He said, when I have called, you refuse going into that chapter, you know, because the Lord is truly, you know, right now to be found until the most high turn his face, his, his face away again, because after this. This is judgment, you know, judgment, judgment. How is my Shapat, man? It says, uh, verse seven, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteousness man and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, meaning, you know, come up out of that sleep, you know, wake up. All right. Know the times that you're living in, you know, call uh, upon your power and your savior. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It says, let him return unto the Lord Yahweh. And he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. Pardon. He will, he will abundantly pardon. Right? So the Lord will have mercy, you know, and that's why there's mercy toward the Lord's elect. You know, not the two thirds, because obviously they won't come back. They're never going to until the Lord destroyed them. And that's fulfilling that um, scripture, that verse in uh, Second Edges 9, when he says, uh, they shall know it after death by pain. What is they going to know after death? This truth. Meaning you're going to have to die on this side. All right. In order for you to get this truth. And in the kingdom, you, you know, you Israelites going to be good. The two thirds. You're going to be perfect. You know. But you're going to have to die on this side because you was wicked. All right. Now, let me get the last precept I have here. And that's in. Um, okay. This is uh, Isaiah 52 and 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that saith to Zion, thou power reigneth. All right. And that's uh, the prophets who glorify Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. 
who stand stiffly for the name of the Lord. I think this is the wrong precept, but uh, it, it does. It, it works. I guess the Lord want me to bring this up. I can't even um, right now think on what I pulled up. A few scriptures came in mind, but, you know, this one is good. You know, you know, all scriptures is good. And you how about you? I was shy. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure that this is the one I wanted, um, but um, it would do. All right. More importantly, I uh, hope you're edified. Uh, let's see. Verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Yeah, I'll read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Isaiah 52 and 6. It says, therefore, my people shall know my name. All right. So you got to know the name of the Lord, man. All right. That is your power source. Your how about Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. I did a lesson earlier, you know, and I may mention on, you know, like, you know, you got men that know of this truth. They heard of it. They could shout it out. You know, they could salute it, but they're not doers of the work. If you know that you're an Israelite, it's your obligation. It's your, you know, uh, it, 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 it is it's, it's that you once you know this word, you have to walk in these ways. You have to walk in the ordinance. OK, you have to have your conversation upright, meaning the way you manage yourself, you change and you turn from the wickedness. You convert into this righteousness and this truth. And which we all once knew before. So it says, therefore, my people shall know my name. And what is the name of the Lord? Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. And the Lord is speaking through the prophets. When these prophecies get fulfilled, man, these last bit of prophecies, Esau is going to force microchips on you people, man. On you two thirds. Y'all are going to get dragged into concentration camps. All right. Ultimately, you're going to be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. All right. World War Three is going to break out. All right. You're going to die of a famine, a lack of food and water. You know, a famine's coming on this word where you won't be able to uh, learn this truth, find the prophets to teach you. It ain't going to be no time of teaching. It's going to be time to hold that oil you in which the Lord gave you. You know, you go into the, uh, the parable of the five virgins. All right. And the five foolish. You know, they, the, the, the wise virgins that had the oil, they didn't get a oil up to the foolish. So it says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. What is that mountain? That mountain represents the government of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You being an Israelite, Yasha Allah, he prints power. You men, starting with you men, all right, that's Israelites from the seed of your father, all right, you are the princes of the Most High. It says... Uh, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace. And we publish peace to you guys, two thirds. You know, we out teaching on the highways and you think we are uh, shits and giggles, man. You know, we entertainment, man. You know, when we're out there telling you that you're, you're the most high, Yahweh's chosen people and Yahweh Shai is your savior. You know, you take it lightly. You refuse to come at the Lord council, man. So it says. Uh, that publish peace. We publish peace to our people. And now this topic is Trump, you know, saying to learn, you better learn that U.S. history or go back into slavery. That was a threat. All right. That publish peace that bring good tidings of good. What is good? That we all keep the laws of the most high. The scriptures say uh, uh, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. No, uh, I'm saying that right. Salakia, you know, but if you practice of the law. You won't bring no ill to your neighbor, man, which is your brother, not any Edomites, not no Hamites, not any other nation. OK, but your nation, your tribes. All right. Twelve tribes, because we all brothers, man. All right. And bring good tidings of good. You know, that's when we will get our land back. The Lord said in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if we acknowledge our sins, he will heal our land. OK, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. It says that public salvation, we public salvation. All right. The men of the Lord, the true men of the Lord that are out teaching his word and sincerity and truth, starting with the apostles and elders here at Great Millstone. We publish salvation. Mm -hmm. OK. Prophets who speak of salvation. All right. To the elect. It says that say unto Zion. Zion is another name for Israel, which means monument. Thou power, our God reigneth. Even in this time now, when you might not think the Lord is there. He, he reigneth, all right? He's the one doing all these things, okay? He's allowing Esau to set the stage for Yahweh Shah to return. All this preparation, all this COVID operation, 
Now they're talking about the new swine flu coming back. Well, new swine flu, a new syringe, shred, uh, you know, syringe of it compared to the, I think it was 1918 when the first pandemic, when it came out with the swine flu. Now it's a new one coming. That might be the October new, new uh, virus out. You know, the hell with the COVID. Now it's back to the sw uh, swine flu, you know. Our Lord Rainer, okay, he's controlling these Edomites to do these things. He's allowing him to do it because there's a, uh, there's a, uh, what you care, a part in the sunder of the times, all right? Esau is going to fall, you know? Most High is going to start taking more control where Esau can't control his agenda that he's pushing out there. You know, people are not going to go along with their computer AI intelligence, you know, that they do their seminars on and practice and, you know, hundreds of times, to um, get it right and then put it out there in the public, you know. They got computers, AI intelligence helping them, you know, so they feel like they're going to win. All right. Our power, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, reigning forever, man. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect. Shalom. Shalom.